Welcome to a new video. How was your day? Let's take a look at some new malicious compliance story, shall we? The first story is called, Can you work tomorrow? I worked as a rescue technician for a safety and rescue company that provides various emergency medical services at construction and hazardous zones. Our scheduling manager was notorious for doing and saying whatever he felt to get empty shifts filled, ironically circumventing a lot of job safety regulations. But on this particular Sunday, I was involuntarily volunteered to work. On the way to a job site, I was involved in a car crash that resulted in our truck turning into an accordion and burning to the frame on a major interstate. Luckily, my partner and I had relatively minor injuries. Among the trivial scratches and various cuts, I had internal bruising in one thigh and knee bad enough to warrant crutches after being discharged from the hospital later that day. Human Resources was very understanding and asked if I was still able to at least come to the office for light duty instead of claiming wages from workers' compensation. Seeing as they were already paying for medical treatment, a new phone and laptop of my choosing, and I could still drive, I said sure. My job had no light duty. So I basically came to the main office and licked stamps. This continued for about three workdays. On the fourth day, the scheduling manager decided I was ready to go to a refinery and climb around machinery. He bursts into the vestibule I was using as a workspace and tosses a job sheet on my desk. Nobody wants to come in. We're short-handed today, so you need to be at this refinery 105 miles away in an hour. You can take truck 23. Sorry, manager. I'm still on light duty. Are you serious? How long are you going to milk this out, dude? I need you to do some real work tomorrow. I have too many jobs going on. I'll let you know if anything changes. I'm sure it won't look good to them if I show up limping on a crutch when I'm supposed to be dragging people out of crawl spaces. The next morning I wake up to an email with a job assignment. The same refinery, same position. I call human resources and he says he'll take care of it and to come into the office for light duty. The scheduling manager is waiting for me at the door. Really, man? We just talked about this. Let me clue you into something. We don't have light duty here. You need to be put on a job site your next shift or I'm going to put you on unpaid time off. Your discharge papers didn't say you can't work. Human resources told me to take it easy until I feel better. Nobody else is pushing the issue, but have it your way. At this point, I was starting to walk without my crutch in short bursts. I was expecting to try a job site on Monday if the weekend showed more improvement, but after these interactions, I felt petty. The scheduling manager was vital and interweaved with the company. He had been there for 16 years or so, so getting him in trouble wasn't an option. I knew to drive a point home, I had to aim for the only thing that mattered. His empty shifts. I went to Human Resources to apologize for the paperwork he about to file. I tell him I'm leaving after lunch to make a doctor's appointment. Not only was there still deep bruising, but the doctor diagnosed me with sprained adduction and abduction muscles. An estimated return date was in three weeks. I happily composed an email to the shift manager and attached the note. He replied with a flurry of angry emails, which I forwarded to Human Resources with my original doctor's note. Human Resources told me I could either stay home and take the compensation pay or come to the office daily at my leisure, leaving any time after lunch. He promised that the manager wouldn't bother me, and I could occupy the spare office in the unused half of the building. I gladly took the latter offer and for the next three weeks, I was sitting in my office, playing games on my laptop all morning and going home at 12.30. Never really had an issue after that. In fact, he never contacted me directly after that. All my scheduling was given as a general memo by the secretary. I did leave for another job two months later. And to this day, I get emails asking me to do contracted jobs for them. The next story is called, Pettiness. In December of 2015, I put in a work order to requested a coat hanger to be placed in our handicapped bathroom. My boss approves it. It gets denied by our building's manager for reasons known only to him. In December of 2016, I submit another work order for the coat hanger. It is again denied. All other stalls on our site have one, except the one in our building. In December of 2017, I resubmit another work order for the coat hanger. This time it is not denied, it just magically disappears into the void. But I still have a certified copy of it. In December of 2018, I resubmit one more time. The building manager actually logs in the quote, hang your coat in your office before you go to the bathroom. Very soon after, I find our exact coat hanger in my own storage area, shiny and new. 
This time, my boss finds it funny and, me being handy, gives me permission to install it on my own. It's been four years, go for it. I then go to our building's supervisor and ask some hypothetical questions. He's on my side but his hands are tied as him installing this would be direct insubordination. Hey, do you know what this is? Yes, and I know what you want to do with it too. Excellent. If one were to hang this on concrete, where would one find those plastic screw inserts? If I were hanging that, I'd use ones similar to those blue ones on the table right there. Cool. And hypothetically, what are the requirements for a coat rack in, let's say, a men's bathroom? Well, I'd make sure it's between 48 and 60 inches off the ground with 30 inches of clearance. Sweet. Thanks. It's Friday, most people are gone and I go and hang the coat hook at 54 inches since after I looked it up online, the regulations for a side approach are 54 inches and it fits nicely in the center of the block. Now, before I hang this up, I add a little flare to the back of the stainless steel in Sharpie as a surprise for the guy who eventually tears this building down. I wrote my name, listed all the work order dates, and are finally completed after four years. I also added a Deathly Hallows symbol in the corner. It lasted one week before the building manager sees it and takes it down. I know this because my boss calls me into the office later, chuckling to himself. He says, so, the building manager took down your coat hook, saw what you wrote and went straight to the vice president. The vice president called me in on an unrelated manner and I saw the coat hook sitting on her desk. I asked why she had it, and she said we'd get to that. After we talked about other things, she handed it to me, I read what you wrote, and laughed really hard. She asked me if the dates were correct, I said yes they were. She asked why it wasn't hung up four years ago? I stated I didn't have any idea. She went quiet for a moment and then asked what the symbol was and I told her. Oddly enough, the symbol was what she was worried most about. She sighed and asked how long things like this had been going on. My boss replied that this is only one example of the manager's pettiness. There are hundreds of examples all over our property, he just gets in the way because he has a modicum of power. The building manager claimed he took it down because it was too high for Ada, but our guy confirmed independently that I was correct. So now I'm just waiting for him to put it back up. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the stories in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.